Welcome to this new how-to. In this how-to, we're gonna look at the A32 Annex dashboard for Flight Simulator 2020. This dashboard replaces the A320neo uh, dashboard from the default airplane, from which is included in Flight Simulator 2020. Uh, be aware that this is a community add-on and it could break the simulator. If it's the case, then remove it. I must say that I didn't experience any issues with it, so uh, doesn't guarantee anything, of course, but uh, I play, that, play Flight Simulator a lot, so that might be a good baseline. So there are two options to install the add-on. The first one is by using the uh, installer, which you can download from option one. The second one, or the second option you can use is the manual install. And if you do that, then you need to put it in the community folder. So be aware of that. When you're downloading the manual installation, you need to do some manual work. If you're downloading the installer, it's just a matter of uh, running the installer. So let me show you the first uh, method first. So here's the uh, download folder or the downloader, the installer. So just double click it. Then I will move it a little bit to the center and I will zoom in a bit. And by default, it detects the or it detects the community folder already, right? So you can see, hey, it detects the community folder, and I have the option to either install the development version or the stable version. Depend on what you want, uh, you could decide to install the development version, but keep in mind this version is really in development, and there could be some uh, issues with it. While the stable version, as the name already says, is a stable version which has been tested a little bit more and is, I would say, good usable for a normal flight. So in my case, I select the stable version, then I need to wait and it extracts or downloads the file and then it extracts it uh, into the community folder. So let's give it some time. So it says, okay, everything should be good now. So now it's time to uh, start fly Flight Simulator. But because starting Flight Simulator takes some time, uh, I will skip this video or I will stop this video and then we will continue when Flight Simulator has started. But prior to that, let me show you the other option. And that's downloading the option and installing manually. So you can see there's already a download link here. So it's a matter of clicking the download link. Uh, that will download the file and depending on your internet speed, it goes. It can take a few minutes. Uh, in my case, it goes, goes pretty fast. And once the zip has been downloaded, you need to extract it into the community folder. And you can find the default installation directories already on the website of uh, FlybyWireSim. So it has the uh, directory for the store or game pass edition, for the Steam version and for the boxed edition, right? Which are the uh, all the, the, disc, the disks which you need to install. So once it's installed, uh, simply open the zip. You will find the A32 Annex in here. And you can extract it, and depending on the version you have a flight simulator, you need to either extract it to this folder, in case of stream, to this folder, and in case to the box version, to this version, or to this folder, sorry. So I will pause the video, we'll start flight simulator now, and then I will come back and show you what the dashboard looks like. So we started recording again because flight simulator has started now, and we're in one of the A320s with the new dashboard from A31 Annex, uh, which is great because it adds a lot of options. So let's start with, I would say, the top. By default, when you would use the default dashboard of Flight Simulator or the default cabin for Flight Simulator, you would see that a lot of these options or a lot of these button buttons do not have a functionality. Uh, what, what, what this add-on adds, it adds a lot of functionality. So for example, uh, these buttons here, I think on the left side, the GPWS are not part of the default uh, installation. But when you add these, this A31 Annex add-on, all or several additional buttons are working. Not all of them are yet working, but maybe they will start working in the future, right? So. For example, uh, the, the, the batteries which you were used to were already working. But as you might have heard, the sounds are a little bit different because they replaced the sounds. Also this sound, I switched on uh, the echo I think, is a little bit different compared to the default installation. So it's not only the buttons and the functionalities which have been changed, 
but it's also the uh, the sound which has, has been added. Uh, another cool feature is the checklist. If you were used to the default checklist, it was a very small one. As you can see, this checklist contains much more checkpoints, right? So it contains the preparation and the whole process until I would say making the approaches, but it also contains all the emergency procedures if you need them. Hopefully, of course, you don't need them. Uh, one of the things I found out is when, when checking these options, right? Some of them have the, the, the eye to it, which allows you to jump to the specific functionality. But some of them also are missing it. I'm not sure if it's a bug or if it will be fixed in the future. Um, for example, the battery switches. You can see there's no uh, eye to the right side of it. But you can see there the, uh, there's an eye on my screen, which tries to refer you to the option. Uh, and as soon as you select it, it will uh, select the option. But here you can see what the bug actually is. So the bug actually is that the previous one, the wipers, is pointing to this button, but the battery switches, which are uh, located here, are not shown anymore. All right, so that, that's one of the, I would say, minor issues I found out. Um, what's the rest of it? Well, the rest of it, there are a lot of other other options in it, right? So let me close this one. Uh, there, are, for example, you can uh, use the fire, uh, fire extinguish button to extinguish the fire. And then when going to the top of the airplane, here you will see some additional buttons. Uh, most of them are not working, as you can see, when I hover over them. Uh, there are a few ones which are, uh, for example, increasing the light, which which works. And some buttons on the right side, which uh, which now work. So that, that's cool. Um, going to the displays. The displays, as you can see, have changed, right? So they're completely different compared to what the default flight simulator uh, 2020 installation has. Let me zoom in a bit further. So currently there's nothing set up, so it will display this. And the same thing is here. It will also display that the GPS primary uh, signal was lost. Uh, that appears to be an option which can work, but then you need to do some additional things before this starts to work, right? So what you need to do is you need to set uh, the flight plan. And on top of that, you need to change the uh, ADRs as they call it. Um, it was a known issue a while ago. They say, hey, you need to make sure that the ADRs are uh, configured correctly. And you will find those uh, switches in the middle position, or you need to put them to the middle position in the overhead panel, right? In the overhead panel, if we would uh, zoom out a bit. The overhead panel is uh, what you would see here. So here you will find, find these buttons, the ADR buttons, and that's something you need to select, right? So currently they're set to off, and so would set them to uh, to on. You can quickly see them beeping up. You see that A there one, two, and three are still disabled, so they're they're not, or the buttons below the 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 knobs, they're they're not having a function yet. Probably that that will change in the future. And as soon as you switch that to on or to an option, you can see that uh, things are starting to work a little bit more. So keep that in mind. It might require you to fully i would say learn from scratch how to uh, use this airplane because this add-on adds a lot of options which is really really cool so going to the uh, main display it also contains a lot of options right by default you are used to say, set, see only the engine but there's now also the bleed which shows you uh, a lot of information about the temperatures uh, the pressure also works, uh, the electrics work, uh, hydraulics doesn't work yet, you know, fuel also works, and you can see that they spent really some time on, let's say, optimizing and fixing this, uh, this these views. Uh, same thing is for the uh, APU, the condition, the doors, the wheels, you can see pretty much of detail, so the front wheel and the two uh, wheels uh, under the wings, or under the, the airplane, sorry. Uh, speed brakes and flight control. 
so there are crazy amount of options being added right so if you're used to the default option or the default dashboard you might think oh my god these are a lot of options <laughs> you should, should simply start from scratch but again that's fun right it's a still learning curve i would say or a steep learning curve um and it also is applicable to the mcdu right so uh by default you will get this option it says okay hey i'm gonna publish the data on the flight uh, so simply say okay hey i want to accept it and there you will have all the uh, options, right? So you will start with the uh, with the init button or maybe the perf button, depending on the, which option or what the steps they are described in the checklist, right? So let's, let's have a look at the checklist. So cockpit preparation, right? You can see the takeoff. You need to insert the speeds here. And speeds can be simply inserted by uh, providing a number, of, let's say 150 and then add insert um if you press the next buttons right so to vr and to v2 you can also change v1 then it will install or it will add some speeds which it recommends you to do so you can either push them in manually or set them by using the uh, buttons here uh, the only thing which doesn't work you need to manually specify it is the uh, throttle reduction uh, where it tries to uh, decrease the uh, the throttle and the flaps piece that's that's not yet yet functioning as you can see see it gives an invalid error so you need to uh, specify it manually and the same things can be done for the climb phase and for the cruise phase and of course for the uh, destination phase and as last piece also for the approach so you can push in the temperature the uh, wind uh, the old etc so a lot of options being added here go around also here so that's all kind of cool uh the init options haven't changed much right you can cha change your um departure airport and your destination by uh, providing the codes of the airport so let me do that uh, so let me open uh, the, the vfr and eddf so And this one and what let's say I'm flying to Amsterdam and then you will push it in here in some cases it says hey not in database if that's the case then simply try it again because in most cases it will work the second time so I'll try it again here it says none And as soon as you did that, you can see that the flight plan or the destination airport and the uh, departing airport have been configured. Things like the cost index, cruise, um, cruising flight level and temperature have not been configured, but that can all be done, right? So we can push, for example, uh, what is it? Uh, let's say 10,000 feet, uh, 25. And you're able to set uh, the temperatures. Same thing is for the cost index. I think I read somewhere that you need to set it to, that one of the options is to set it to 25. And once that's done, you have added the uh, stuff here. Qu ground temperature um, isn't populated by default, but once you're uh, connecting to ATIS, you can collect that information. Um, one of the options now is that it automatically added the flight plan, right? But if you want to use another flight plan, for example, from SimBrief, you can also uh, load that directly from Flight Simulator. So you can use SimBrief.com to schedule your, your flight. Then using the uh, MCDU, you can uh, configure it. And you need to do that by going to the MCDU men menu, then going to the options. Um, then go so let me do, then press the the button here let me show it again so the aoc button and there you will find a uh, sim brief here you will provide your username and then you're able to load the uh, flight plan flight plan directly flow 
from simbrief.com which is a cool option because then you don't need to punch in all the things manually or use the flight simulator built-in uh, scheduling tool so you can see a lot has been added to this add-on and keep in mind it's not yet finished right this is only version 0 0.50 which is uh, not yet the 1.0 version so a lot of cool things I think we, we discussed a lot probably not all the options because there are so many options being added by this add-on but this is a I would say a good start point so if you're not convinced to use the A32 Annex up, uh, I would say add-on maybe I convince you now here ends this video if you like the video then consider to use the like button if you've got questions or remarks then use the question and remarks button if you like to see more of these videos or like more of the tutorials about how to fly and how to operate the airplane then consider to subscribe to my channel thanks for watching and see you next time